All right. Now, before we get into today's podcast, um, depending when you're watching this video, if you're watching this video, the moment it comes out over on YouTube, there's only two days left to buy your tickets at winyourdreambike.com. You stand a chance of winning a brand new Pinarello F12 amongst four other amazing prizes. So head over to the website, winyourdreambike.com. Enter the competition. The draw takes place on Friday the 31st, but the draw closes on midnight Wednesday the 29th of July. And your odds of winning this are extremely good. And I can guarantee they will not be as good next month. So make sure you get entered. All right. Now, I also should say as a bit of a public service announcement, I apologize for the fanboying that you're about to experience on this um, podcast for the first maybe 10 minutes. But but I... Hey, listen. This guy's a superstar. That's all I've got to say. Hope you enjoy the podcast. If you do, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and um, enjoy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the best cycling podcast ever. I promote ourselves, Camp. We are the best cycling podcast in the world. And over the next couple of weeks, we've got some freaking amazing guests starting with this one right now. We're going to get straight into it and we're going to talk to him shortly. But Cam, um, Cam, do people realise that you're the co-host on this and not just a guest? <laughs> because we, every time I post one, we get a comment saying, why are you interviewing Cameron Jeffers again? So for those of you who don't know, Cameron is a co-host, not just a bloody guest. You all right, Cam? Chris just likes... Chris just likes the sound of his own voice. That's why he talks so much. Doesn't doesn't give me a chance to talk. It's not. That might be this. No, 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 that no, might no, be no, this year. No, 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 no. It's because I ask you questions. You you just don't give a shit about me. No, Never it's because me. it's because every week I go, Chris, please, please, for once, can I do the intro? You go, nope, nope, the intro is mine. <laughs> you go, if you want to do the intro, you can start your own bloody podcast. Shut the fuck up. See, I'm still here. Oh, I'm still hello. here, boys. Hello. <laughs> I'm Sorry. just having a domestic while well, I guest sits drinking um, Polish tea, maybe, by the looks of it. Right, let's get straight into it. This man deserves a bloody intro. Three times a world bloody champion, the youngest ever world champion, and the youngest ever speedway rider to get three world championships. Is that right, Ty? Yeah, sounds like that. Facts. Facts. It is, of course, Ty Wuffenden. Um, speedway extraordinaire. Now, I guess cyclist. Before we get into the cycling and everything that you're doing in the cycling world, Ty, first, welcome. Thanks for actually being a, a decent guest on our show for once, instead of just me and Cam <laughs> talking absolute dog shit. Um, Nonsense. But yeah, I, like, I don't know if anybody, I, some people know, some people won't know, but I'm like a huge, a huge Speedway fan. I used to watch Speedway when I was a kid. I used to race motorbikes and like motorbikes are my life. So I'm going to fanboy out for the next like 10 minutes while we talk Speedway, if that's all right. All right, I'll be back Sounds in a good. bit, boys. <laughs> Cam, you might, you, Cam, you might learn a thing. I'm joking, I'm joking. You, I'm you, joking, I'm you joking. might learn it a thing. Cam while he's wearing, it says Cam while he's wearing one of my hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I've got a bit of it. Before, before, before Chris starts fanboying, um, so Too Ty, late. I mean, we've known each other for, for a bit now. And uh, a while ago, Ty sent me, sent me some of his hats and... They are, they are great quality hats. If anyone wants one, I'm sure you can buy them off his website. But I've literally been wearing, I wear I wear his hats like all the time. And we're down in London uh, a couple of days ago. I was wearing my favorite one, which is the you know the black one at the front. It's got the, the white mesh at the back. And um, we, we left our hotel to go and film a video in Oxford. And I left it on top of the car. You not bad. <laughs> you absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, now, now I'm just wearing the old black one, but. Yeah, I'm, uh, dude, I'll just I'm... send I'll just send you another one. If that's your favourite, I'll send you two. Oh, <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. You can have it, Chris. You can have a wristband. Chris, you can. Thanks, man. You can have mine. You can have you can have this one. I don't want it out of your sweaty head. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy with that one. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I was I was pretty I was pretty disappointed that I uh, that I lost I lost my hat. So cracking no, story. Yes, we'll sort that out. <laughs> Facts. Unbelievable. Right, let's get into it. Ty, I'm, listen, I don't want to go into your whole story of Speedway because it's a bloody long one and a lot of people will know it. For those of you, for those of the people out there that don't know it, give us a brief history of your of your Speedway career. I was born in England, grew up in Australia, hence the accent. Um, came back to Europe to race um, just to see if I could, you know, do it professionally. Um, and that went pretty good and every year just got better and better and, um, you know, I've won three individual world titles, uh, one team world title, 
Uh, I think I got a silver and a couple of bronzes individual. Um, last year was the first year since 2013 that I wasn't on the podium, so that was um, that was unfortunate. But I broke my back last year, so uh, yeah, it was a bit of a strange year. And then yeah, followed into the year of the coronavirus. So how did you how did you end up getting into Speedway? Because you know. Well, you wanted it. You wanted it brief, so okay. No, no, <laughs> but no, no. It's great. No, brief is fine. But I want to. I want to know how you get onto it. Why did you choose Speedway? Because you started on motocross bikes, didn't you? Yeah, I used to race motocross in Aussie, and um, <clears throat> there was a Speedway bike tucked away in my mate's shed. We went to his house because he had a track in his garden, and um, yeah, it was just ripping laps around there with my old boy. And uh, when I was prepping the bikes on the Saturday, ready for Sunday, there was a Speedway bike tucked away, and I said, "Oh." what's that dad can I have a go at that and he goes oh if you want to try that then like we're going to sell you a motocross bike and I was like I think I was 12 at the time and I was like yeah pretty instinctive so I just went yeah sweet sell him let's have a go at that but I didn't know that my dad actually raced that was his like profession when he was living in England really but it was never really spoke about in the household so it was kind of like yeah I don't know I didn't really know properly like to what level he was at until I returned back to the UK in 2000 well when 2005 I think I came back when I was 15 and then people was going oh yeah I used to like we was down here when your dad used to race and all that sort of stuff so um he already had a good idea of what he was getting me into but um obviously the funds wasn't there to do both so um yeah just that was the decision really and you and you're happy with that choice you don't think what what you could have done in in motocross or I think at the time I think uh when I was 12 what year did I get that 12 would have been 02, wouldn't it? I was born in 1990, so yeah, it would have been 2002. Yeah. Quick math. So I got, my black belt, I got my black belt in Taekwondo, I believe, that year or the year before. I was one of the youngest kids in Australia to achieve that. Sweet. Um, so I think I enjoyed motocross more than I did Taekwondo just because you know, we started every session with 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups. <laughs> And I've been doing that since I was like six. So, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was a good decision. It's, it's turned out alright. So, so what about road racing? Did that never tickle your fancy? Because I know a lot of kids they they go down the motocross yeah. route, don't they? And then they they see that there's either not enough money in it, or you you end up getting injured, and then they always go down the route of um, of road racing. Funnily enough, I, I did a track day. Uh, I done a couple of track days with with Leon and Ron at Donington, mm-hmm. um, and I. On a stock 600 with stock tyres, stock suspension, I was two seconds off race winning BSB times. No. Uh, sorry, British Super Sport times. Really? So as soon as like we're looking at the timesheets and like Leon said that to me, I was sat there thinking, because I do enjoy road racing more than I do speedway. But even like there was discussions between my trainer, Alex Lowe, Sam Lowe's. I was like, you know, what do you think? Like, what would my options be? Like, how much money could I get? Like, compare, just weighing up everything, you know, like, seeing what's what. And I was saying to Faye, um, like, would you support me if I do this? And all that sort of thing. And um, Faye's just slight dropping in front of me. <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, it was, uh, I'm pretty, like, impulsive like that. Like, if I get a decision in my head or, like, something that I want to do, then I'll just, like, go do it. You should. But I didn't end up doing it just purely based on like it meant I would have had to start from the bottom again and, you know, work my way up in a, you know, I would have had to do all the British rounds and then work my way into Worlds yeah. and that sort of stuff. And I kind of like, I've done the hard work with Speedway and, you know, I'm good at it. So just stick with it and see how great I can be. That's pretty impressive. Because like with motocross, there's there's a direct comparison, throttle, brake, gears. It's all, you know, you can transfer it straight across the road. But with Speedway, no brakes no gears one foot peg essentially and you're only ever going around left handers yeah, it's amazing that you can jump on a bike uh, and 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 get the feel for for the braking and the cornering yeah i'm not very i'm not very good at motocross like i can get around all right do, do little scrubs and stuff if the corner's leaning the right way and the jump yeah. pace is nice <laughs> but um has to all kind of fall into place but on, on the road bike yeah it was just sweet i crashed the second time i was there um coming out of coppers it's a right hander and I was on a 600 following Josh Waters, and he was on a 1,000. Oh, that's pretty quick right so there. <clears throat> he kept pulling off the corner, um, and it was like, it was pissing me off. So I went, like, this next lap, I'm going to come out of the corner a gear less and give it a handful. 
but you have to have a lot more throttle control on a road bike because as soon as I just rode like a speedway bike, I just went bang and bang. snapped the throttle and uh, low sided it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty fast, but picked it back up and rode it back to the pits with a broken handlebar. Man, so speedway, yeah. like bef- I'm I'm gonna let Cam talk cycling in a minute, but uh, you crack on, mate. You crack on. I I'm, used to, I'm not I've not seen this happy before. I, <laughs> I used to go to speedway every um, every Thursday at Sheffield. Um, and see the, the the tigers, and absolutely loved it, and always wanted to kind of have a go at it. And then I got, a, I ended up getting a supermoto bike, and I, I knew a mate who used to, I think he was a security guard down at Sheffield Tigers, so he let me onto the practice track on the on the supermoto bike, and like, pff, I had no skill at all when it came to that speedway malarkey. Was it was it Brent with this bald head, big stocky bloke? Yeah, Brendan. Was it? Yeah. How do you know yeah, him? Yeah, he's a, a late. Oh, just I've spent years at Sheffield because we used to live in Scunthorpe, and then I bought my first house in in Sheffield, um, in Crystal Peaks, and then you used to live near Crystal Peaks. Yeah, I bought my first house there. Yeah, repossession. That's where I used to live, like five minutes away. I want to see Cam on a bike. I would love <laughs> to see that. I've uh, I've ridden a motorbike once in my life. <laughs> I think you'd be pretty good on it. Yeah, I mean, I used, to, I used to. I used to race BMX, so I don't see why it's it's BMX bike with an engine, isn't it? Exactly, exactly the same. Yeah, way. yeah. Pro- probably need some strong arms. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, what are you? Look at it. I've been working on these bad boys. I've been doing stuff around the house. Like you've been working on one of growing. them. One of they're them. They're growing. Bad boys. All right, let's segue into cycling now, Cam. Uh, let's segue into cycling. Yeah. So obviously, I, I'm wearing this hat quite a lot now in like my videos and on instagrams and stuff and i'm no like it's quite funny that like the people people are messaging me like oh you got a tie off hat on and like cyclists and you, you know you don't think like the two sports really cross over and i guess they don't but it's quite funny how like people recognize someone from a different sport you know and feel like that's that's, that's pretty cool um i don't know man it's mad like when like if i if i do a ride on like zwift or something i always like chat in the comments like before a race and whatnot and see what people like how they are and it's a climb drop in how much he's weighing today (laughs) (laughs) um all that sort of stuff and and it's surprising like pretty much nearly every time i do it like someone goes oh i'm surprised you're on here or like whatever so pretty funny i think there's a lot of um motorcyclists who who either use cycling as training and then just end up getting into it, and 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 you appear to be that type of person that's got in. Uh, have you done it for training, and then just you've just fallen in love with it, or what? Oh, I've I've, I've always enjoyed cycling. I, I've always like just played it though. I've never done any like structure or anything or like that kind of thing. But um, last year I was doing like triathlon, so I was like swimming, running. Um, Soon figured out that I hate getting up at five o'clock in the morning. Well, getting in the ocean at five o'clock in the morning. Um, and then I'm not really a fan of running. And I just thought, why am I doing all three of these when I enjoy the bike most? So I just cycle full time now. Yeah, and you you probably cycle more than Cam right now, don't you? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll be cycling more than him when I get back to Australia. I'm kind um... of like I'm, I'm kind of stuck at the moment because like one, I don't really know the roads around here. I spend like a heap of money on like parts for my Venge and I've kind of like messed it up because it doesn't run as nice as it used to, um, <laughs> which sucks. So I've got that actually getting like tuned up again now. So I actually haven't had my Venge for like three weeks. So I'm just on Zwift at the moment. Well, I'm trying not to abuse. I'm trying not to abuse it too much because I did that like two months ago. I did like 600k on Zwift, <laughs> and then the week before was like 580 or something. That's yeah. That's 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 a lot of hours in Zwift. What uh? What yeah. what's your what's your weekly average sort of looking at them in terms of hours on the bike? Uh, last week I did two fifty. The week before I did two fifty. This week I'm at three hundred. It just depends because like last week I did some races, so I went like off my my plan. Um, I'm I'm training Dean Downing's coaching me. Um, so I'm Is kind he? of yeah. That's so amazing. legend. Um, uh, yeah, I kind of went off last week, so I was doing the tours few like the virtual uh, basically what, what happened like when I said like I'm impulsive and I get stuck into something and I'm like really focused on it so like I did all my research on Zwift and figured out what's what and I need to use a TT bike to get more XP points to level up to unlock the better bike I'm trying to get the Cervelo now um, I did climb 50,000 and didn't realize that I have to select the Tron thing 
so I've got to climb another 50,000. So Dean, did the, Dean did the same. Um, I did all the routes, um, bar the French ones. So I've got like three routes left on the game. Um, uh, and then the 1,100 watt kick, the 1,200 watt kick, and the Everest. And then I'm ticked that off. Done. Cam, I think we've got a Zwift fanboy here. No, I, I'm a bit I, of I a think, fanboy. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know whether he's necessarily like a Zwift fanboy or if he's just. I can. I can't. I'm kind of seeing his personality where like. You almost, you almost, you almost seem a bit OC, OCD. Like you kind of get, you get so, so kind of like invested within something. And I can see it in the cycling. Like we talk back and forth quite a lot, and and like you always send me pictures of like getting this stuff for your bike, and it's always, you know, you're always looking for like the, the the lightest thing or the the most aerodynamic thing. And I can see that you're doing a lot of research like about different things within the cycling world. And is it right in saying you're a bit OCD? Hundred <laughs> percent. Like yeah. even in the house, like get up in the morning, I make the bed, make sure all the creases are out, go outside and like put the pan on the hob it needs to be straight and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. And that started from like when I used to do the bikes myself, when I first started racing, my dad was like, everything needs to be perfect. Like, and I, and that just kind of like automatically translated into my life to the point where it's actually annoying because it's like, I, I actually waste time sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. it's not it's not a bad trait. Like, like you you can see oh, that you it's, invest. It's clean. Yeah, you 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 invest hundred percent in whatever it is you're doing. So you know when you're yeah. training. Like I couldn't think if I wasn't competing or racing on my pedal bike, I I could not stick to a structured plan. Whereas clearly yeah, you, like you, I'm, you can, you enjoy that. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's why I started working with um with Dean because I, I needed that structure. I need like something to follow a plan. Um, I wanted to get strong. Uh, I think when I started with Dean, my FTP was like, this is only like probably 12 weeks ago. I was at 250 and now I'm at like 280, uh, 287, I think. Um, so the, the FTP is up heaps and like my power is wicked. I did a I did that climb the other day, the 1500 meter 20K one on Zwift, the French one, Ventop. Ventop. Yeah. yeah, I think it's called Ventop. Ventop, on, uh, yeah, it's Ventop on, on Zwift. Zwift. And... Um, like I started, like every Zwift race started super hard, like smashed out some big watts. And then I just kind of sat around like, I don't know, 220 to 250 recovered. And then like for the last 500 meters, just did a nice big kick for the last 500. So I know that I can punch big power and then recover at a relatively high power and then go again. So I'm definitely getting stronger. Um, but yeah, like Cam said, like I've, I've been doing all the research. I'm just... At the moment, I'm just building a, a bastion. Um, so the guys in Melbourne that are doing the titanium and carbon, um, I got the bill for it the other day. I won't tell you how much it is because it's just ridiculous, <laughs> but they're building the whole bike for me. So obviously their frame, I've got uh, THM carbon calipers, Lupio carbon pedals, THM carbon crank with carbon tie chain ring, uh, THM headstock, and bars integrated, not the ones that have got the bolts on, because obviously the bolts are a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, Obermeyer, Milstein wheels, like it's Milstein it's wheels. <laughs> yeah, man, I've gone all out on it. All right. What, how... he, reckons, he reckons he'll be surprised if it's like any more than like 6.3, 6.4 kilos finished. Oh, wow. Mm. Ty, tell me, how much would a, a Speedway bike cost? Uh, it's really hard to put a price on it because you build everything – it's essentially like you can't go buy a Yamaha or a Honda yeah, yeah. or a Kawasaki. You have to build it. So it depends. Like my bikes are all titanium bolts, but mm -hmm. no one else in the sport uses titanium bolts. But obviously with the stuff that I've learned from cycling with the weight and whatnot, I'm taking that into my speedway. So we're just trying to get as much off as we can. And then like, I don't know, an engine, if you buy the engine from GM and then get it and then send it to the tuner and have it tuned, or if you, let's say buy an engine from the tuner, it's probably like, between five five and a half thousand pound. So that's just the engine. So so you could say the Bastion will probably be there or thereabouts as the same price as your as your world championship yeah. winning speedway bike. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's nothing more than a hobby. <laughs> I love that. So what are you, what are you going to do? Not with a this hobby fitness? though. No, I suppose not. But what? But it's but it's not it. your livelihood though, is it? It's not my livelihood, but like if someone, like if Ineos said, oh, like, you know, I've just spoke to Cam about this, like how long would it take me to go pro? <laughs> um, if, 
if any of us rocked up, if any of us rocked up and was like, oh, you know, we'll offer you a contract for like, I don't know, three hundred thousand pounds or something, I'd, I'd be like, oh, I'll have a year out of speed when I go cycling for a year. All right, like, all right. Here's the question. Here's the question. How much? How much would a pro team have to come along and offer you for you to say, right, I'm going to hang up my speedway wheels for for a year or two, and we're gonna I'm gonna go full time and cycling? Yeah, three hundred down. Yeah. Yeah, I do it three hundred. <laughs> I earn a lot more than that, but obviously I run the team. So I employ four guys year round. Um, we have two vans, we have six bikes. Um, you know, the, the tools, the pit bays, the hotel bills, the flight bills, everything comes out of my pocket, but I have all yeah. the sponsorship money and all the, the race income. So it's, it's a good, it's a good balance. It's a lot harder work, but if someone's going to offer me the same money to ride my push bike, <laughs> And have none of the hassle of having to do this and do that and book this hotel and all that sort of stuff. I'd be like, yeah, sweet, let's go. I was um, maybe I mean, two, maybe two, maybe two years. I need a year, like to, yeah. to learn the year, trade. Sitting on, sitting on for a while. <laughs> me and uh, me and Chris were talking when I was down at his last time. Actually, um, obviously, in Speedway, you've no, you know, you, you've got your your accelerator throttle, you've no brakes, and you're coming sort of 60 70 mile an hour in, into a corner with no brakes you know that takes some sort of like there must be a switch inside you which is just like i'm just gonna send this and you know like, you, you you kind of don't have that fear element in you or you mustn't have and me and chris were talking like in a tour series round in the uk which is like a one hour closed circuit crit around a city center you got 80 or 90 guys in a bunch flying down these cobbled wet cobbled descents into corners like you'd be perfect for that like literally <laughs> Dude, I did a crit in I did a crit in Aussie, and it was like around a go kart track, and it's absolutely ridiculous that all these guys that are like coming up through the ranks and they're like you know under twenty ones and under eighteens, whatever, and they have no concept about cornering. Like I was going into the corners at least another four kilometers now faster than them, and holding my line and getting around the corner and then jumping on the pedals on the way out, and I was getting on the pedals earlier than they was as well. And it's like, why aren't these, like my mate races road racing in Aussie, Brian Starring, and he does, he like wins all the crits in, in Western Australia. And when it rains, he just annihilates everyone. Like no one can stay near him. I think he lapped up to like third the last time it rained. Because he's just, he races a road bike. So he just has so much understanding and feel for the wheels or for the tires and the grip level. And he just annihilates everyone. It's like funny to watch. It's like you're watching a bunch of C graders race an A grader. I think that helped me as well. Even though I only spent what, three or four years racing supermoto, I went and raced on the track um, and raced Kieran. And like sitting there, bumping elbows and trying to find gaps that didn't exist, it, was like, it, almost, it almost felt like second nature because I'm normally doing that at 70, 80, 90 mile an hour. On, on a yeah. motorbike so when it comes to pedal bikes you could easily just like nudge so someone slow. out of the way and yes yeah, <laughs> someone's like oh shit where really you're like come well, on I let's i think the crit of it i think the crit i finished like eighth but i'm i think going into the last lap i was like sat at 20th and then i was just like right i was like nail this nail all these corners and i i won the sprint of the like second group i didn't i couldn't stay on for the first group because one guy had like three guys working for them and the other guy, my mate Wayne, he's an A grader, but he's like fifty, so he does a B grade just for just for bounce. So if you could ride for any team, any world tour team, who would you ride for? Whoever's gonna offer a little waster like me <laughs> <laughs> an opportunity. Cam, I think you're serious. I think we need to we need to somehow pull some strings and um and, and Literally, find out. Who like, can ride I'm, for. I'm 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 thirty this year and from what I understand, like pro cyclists peak when they're like thirty three. So I've got like at least three years of structured hard training. So is this like, like to, is this, is it, sorry to cut you off. Is this like a genuine dream? Like you would, you know, you would happily give up Speedway to, to pursue cycling? I'd have, a, if, I'd, have a, I'd have a year out because I'm confident that I could have a year out and come back and still be as competitive as I am now. Sweet. Without sounding like a dick. Nah, I mean, like, <laughs> confident. you got to be confident. Like, But, the, but that's it, you know. As you know. <laughs> A lot of people stick to their lane. Like you know, you're you're you could go for another five years, six years doing speedway as long as you stay injury free. But and you're yeah. always going to be at the top. But like that's what most people do. They never think oh, I'll I'll go and find a new challenge. Like look at Michael Jordan for look, instance when he left basketball and then went to baseball to go play baseball. And he did. It, I mean, he wasn't World Series class, but he was 
he was pretty good. And if he'd have stuck at it for a little while longer, he could have potentially been, you know, a very good baseball player. And it's the same. I guess I'm a big I'm a big believer that like if you believe in yourself and like you genuinely believe that you can do something, then you can. It always helps like when you, you've won a few world your championships. Your head is so too. strong. You, you look at, like, dolphins, for instance. Like, they use, like, 25% more of their brain or something than humans do. Yeah. So we're just, like, we're just like we're, just, we're chimps, aren't we? We're, like, little chimps that, like, pick up <laughs> stuff off the floor and eat it and scratch our ass. But, like, if you can actually, like, focus enough and put everything into it. Like, I'm, I'm riding Speedway at the moment, but, like, all during the week, my, my training structured. My training structured around being a cyclist. And do you think do you think your cycling essentially is, is gonna? Sorry, man, go on. Essentially, it's like it's not really like I have another coach that is. I said to him like, I want to be a good cyclist, and he's like, Yeah, but it's your job at Speedway, and I was like, well, Build me a program, but I want to be a good cyclist. I need to do core, I need to do this, I need to do that. So I've done my research, and then I did like I don't know, probably like a month and a half, and there was like a lot of arm stuff in there, and I was like, Man, I don't want to be doing arm. I was like you know rotational chops and whatnot i'm I'm like i just want to get strong legs and a strong core forget the upper body and i'll just look like a standard spaghetti arm well that's (laughs) that's what i was going to ask then like how has your your cycling training affected your speedway if at all it hasn't because like for me speedway is like like when cam gets on a bike he rides a bike because it's it's easy like if he has to do a maneuver or like he he knows that up this hill like okay, i can push this many watts because he he just knows because that's what he does mm-hmm. that's like me on a spare bike like me riding a spare bike is like you walking down the street yeah like it's just natural because i've done it for so long and i've kind of mastered the craft and, and it's you know i've become one with the bike and focusing on my cycling and all the stuff i'm doing my cycling doesn't change that because I feel like as long as I'm fit, like I'm, it'll be sweet. Yeah. And like my resting heart rate the other day was 39, so I think I'm pretty fit. That's pretty impressive. Cam, what's yours? That's lower than mine, I think. Uh, I think like 40, 43 Wait. it goes down to. I got mine down to. 35. Yeah, come on, mate. You got, you got, you got another like, got like seven. Like you've got another like seven years on me, boy. But he's got like a family and kids. Imagine how stressful that is. Yeah, I know, and I still get a resting heart rate of 39. Exactly. <laughs> Come that's on, why Cam. I live at home. That's why. That's why I live alone, boys. It's so funny. Like I'm literally. We're in a one bedroom apartment, right? And there's like me and the two girls. Me, Faye, and the two girls. So like, this is our bed. Riley sleeps there. <laughs> Kelly sleeps down there. Oh, mate. It's mental. You think good, you know uh, uh, the world champion would have at least seven rooms? Oh, well, I have. I've got a farm in England, but we don't. We'd, like, I'm stuck here. I can't leave Poland. So if I get coronavirus, I'm gonna have six weeks break. Six weeks. So, so maybe, maybe yeah. for, so maybe for the, the the kind of the our traditional cycling viewers that, that might not know too much about Speedway. Why are you based in Poland? Uh, because like Poland's the only league that's running at the moment. The rules are a little bit different out here. They're they're allowed to run. The first two meetings was with empty stadiums. Bear in mind, like our stadium holds seventeen thousand, and it's sold out every week. So, um, really, then after the third meeting, we was allowed twenty five percent capacity, like all tracks all over the country. But I had to come out two weeks prior, four weeks prior to my first race. I had to quarantine for two weeks, and then, like, I didn't think the girls was going to be out here. I thought I was going to be here till October. And then I said, like, oh, like. I can get you a private jet from East Midlands to Rosbach, so we'll do that. So I flew the girls out, and then now we're all together, and we're living here. And like Poland's not locked down; like you can go to the town and like sit in restaurants, and all the shopping centers are open. So it's probably better for them being here as well, and better for my mental health. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know who posted it, but I saw yesterday on Instagram there was. Um, it's funny that I'm talking to you actually. Um, there was a picture of speedway fans in oh, poland on in the, the um, on the cranes there yeah. must have been about 20 cherry pickers just all in a line yeah, and there they, were guys with flares and they're yeah, mental yeah, out they there aren't they because obviously they they would have sold out and they wouldn't have been able to get tickets so yeah, they, they rented crazy. cherry pickers and took them to the max lift and just watched from the top <laughs> <laughs> so what's the atmosphere like at it's poland insane. compared to um to like cardiff is there a big difference or is it similar uh it's Cardiff, you, you never beat Cardiff. Yeah. 
the, the British GP at Cardiff is is mind blowing because of the way the stadium is and it's quite enclosed and the noise is just unreal. Like if I pass someone, I can hear the, I can hear the crowd cheer really? like with my helmet on and on the bike. Like it's crazy. Um, and then, but Poland is different again because it's club racing and we go home and away. Mm-hmm. We race each other once home and away, and then we have like semi-finals and finals. So they, the fans are like, they have like a section of the crowd that are like football hooligans. <laughs> so they're singing all the whole, the whole night and they're singing at each other from the other side of the stadiums. And like, it's, it's insane. It's like, you can't really explain it. You just have to witness it. Why is it so big out there? Uh, it's speedway has been Poland's national sport for a, a lot of years. Mm. And I think football's pretty much caught it up now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just been their national sport. So it's just, Hectic. Maybe. There we go, everybody. Ty Wuffendon seems to have used the the, uh, the whole of the Polish internet, um, and he's just been cut off. So we're going to end it there. Um, thank you so much to the triple world champion for joining us. What a nice guy. What a cool yeah. dude. I mean, just, obviously, he was clearly fanboying over you. Like, come on, Chris. That, that first ten minutes was quite embarrassing. I uh, had to sit here and listen to you. Oh, Ty, I love you. I love you. I'm a big Speedway fan. Hey. I don't give a shit. I like I I my whole childhood was spent watching Speedway. So you know, it's nice to. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look, he's he's a cool guy, and it's nice to see. Like it's 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 actually from the from a bigger picture, it's pretty cool to see like more and more people getting into cycling. You know, we've got you know the likes of Ben Foster's the footballer, and now you see people like Ty Wuffen doing getting into cycling. I think you know it's, it's only going to be beneficial for the for our sport, isn't it? Yeah, man, I think I think it's yeah, like you say, it's a good thing. We can't have too many people involved in um, in cycling, really, can we? So it was awesome. Right, last word with you today. Go for it. Ciao. Cheers for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Peace. Where might? Oh shoot, I said last word to him, but where might we be for the next podcast? Ooh, Europe. Mainland, mainland Europe. Oh, okay. Right, say bye again. Bye.